Let's learn about stiff person syndrome. So this is a disease where there is a blockade of the glutamic acid decarboxylase pathway, or the GAD pathway. This will cause decreased CNS inhibition, so basically overactivation of the central nervous system, which will cause increased muscle activity. And this is what causes the symptoms of the disease, such as stiffness of the body. There is characteristically a autoantibody to GAD in most of the patients that have non-perineoplastic disease. And remember that GAD is associated with type 1 diabetes, so about 30% of these patients will have type 1 diabetes. In the perineoplastic variant, if there is a different antibody associated with that, anti-amphiphysin, and that is related to breast cancer. So the presentation is fairly slowly progressive. Usually patients start uh, displaying the disease in around the age of 20 to 50, and it's more common in women than men. The symptoms consist of trunk stiffness, generalized rigidity, muscle spasms, and a wide-based gait, although sometimes it's not a generalized rigidity, it's a focal rigidity. The proximal muscles are more affected, and there's a very sensitive and specific characteristic the startle reflex where the patients will have increased muscle spasms when they're startled. You can have swallowing difficulties as well and on exam there will be hyperreflexia. Important for both uh, diagnosis and treatment these symptoms are improved with benzodiazepines. In terms of lab studies the anti-GAD is elevated in the serum and the CSF for most non-perineoplastic cases. And in the CSF, the anti-GAD is probably the cause of oligoclonal bands being commonly found in this disease. When muscle enzymes are sent, CK and aldolase are normal or mildly elevated, and inflammatory markers such as ESR and CRP are also normal. The Hemoglobin A1c can be elevated. Remember, these patients can have diabetes. So on the EMG, it's usually done for diagnosis. There is continuous muscle activity that is characteristically decreased by diazepam or by sleep. There are superimposed intermittent contractions while awake and there can be abnormal co-contraction of antagonistic muscles causing pain. And there can be stimulus-induced truncal myoclonus as well. For treatment, we start with finding out if there's a neoplasm, and so age-appropriate cancer screening is done. Treatment of the associated tumor can cure the disease potentially if it's a perineoplastic disease. We'll want to treat any related autoimmune diseases such as diabetes or thyroid disease. And medications for symptomatic management include diazepam or clonazepam and baclofen. And sometimes for refractory cases, IVIG can be used. The prognosis in these patients, normally there's a slow functional decline with gait impairment and loss of mobility. If the disease is perineoplastic though, treating the associated tumor can decrease the symptoms dramatically or cure the disease.